Technological artifacts are morally and politically charged. This moral and political connotation has been evidenced by many scholars. For example, the philosopher of technology Langdon Wiener, in a famous paper, discusses the case of the so-called racist overpasses, designed by the very influential urban planner Robert Moses in the first half of the 20th century. Moses intentionally designed several overpasses over the parkways of Long Island, which were too low to accommodate buses. Only cars could pass below there, and therefore the overpasses complicated the access to John's Beach Island, a recreation park. Only people who could afford a car, and in Moses' days they were generally not Afro-Americans, could easily access the beaches. As the sociologist of science Bruno Latour argues, technological artifacts are bearers of morality. They are constantly taking all kinds of moral decisions for people. For example, the moral decision of how fast one drives is often delegated to a speed bump, which tells the driver, slow down before reaching me. Technological mediation is exactly the phenomenon that occurs when technologies fulfill their functions and help shaping actions and perceptions of their users. In other words, technologies are not neutral intermediaries that simply connect users with their environment. Rather, they are impactful mediators that help shaping how people use technologies and how they experience the world. The concept of technological mediation can be concretely illustrated by an obstetric ultrasound. Ultrasound is not simply a functional means to make visible an unborn child in the home, but mediates the relations between the fetus and the parents. For example, ultrasound isolates the fetus from the female body and creates a new status for the fetus as a separate living being. Moreover, ultrasound places the fetus into a context of medical norms it translates pregnancy into a medical process, the fetus into a possible patient, and congenital defects into preventable sufferings. What said evidences that we should not consider morality only as a human affair, but also as a matter of things. Instead of moralizing other people, humans should or could also moralize their material environment. If we want people to pay a ticket to use the subway, we can educate them to buy a ticket before entering it, but we can also design metro barriers that tell people buy a ticket before you enter the subway. So the moralization of technologies is the deliberate development of technologies in order to shape moral action and moral decision-making. In this sense, moral decision-making is a joint effort of human beings and technological artifacts. Moralizing technologies are strictly related to the notion of active responsibility, as we have seen. Active responsibility means acting to prevent the negative effects of technology, but also to realize some positive consequences. But what's the connection among the active approach to responsibility, the moralization of technologies and artificial intelligence? The simple answer is that active responsibility plays a key role in the design of those technologies, such as artificial intelligence, that have a major impact on humans and societies. However, there are other two important elements worth introducing. The first one is the level of uncertainty connected not only to AI technologies themselves, but also to their introduction into their context of use and to their interaction with humans. This is the reason why AI technologies can be labeled as experimental technologies. Technologies are experimental if there is only limited operational experience with them, so that social benefits and risks cannot be straightforwardly assessed on the basis of experience. 
The second element is the so-called invisibility factor. The computer ethicist Jim Moore introduces this idea in a famous paper where he argues that most of the time and under most conditions, computer operations are invisible. He distinguishes among three types of invisibility. Invisibility of abuse, the intentional use of invisible operations of a computer to engage in an ethical conduct. Invisibility of programming values, those values that are intentionally or unintentionally inserted into programs. Invisibility of complex calculations, that is the enormous capacity of calculations of computers that goes beyond human comprehension. Both uncertainty and the invisibility factor need to be taken into account while considering the active approach to the design of AI technologies to shape them in order to promote a positive effect. Let's consider a moralizing technology, embedding AI techniques, and specifically designed to promote a positive effect. A Nahalco lock for cars. This tool prevents you from driving when you have in your body an alcohol concentration higher than that permitted by the law. Let's suppose that this device works without errors and does not present any issues with respect to privacy. Yet, several people would not buy a car with this lock, even if the car does not cost more than a normal car. Negative reactions to these behavior steering technologies are common. First, there is the fear that human freedom is threatened and that democracy is exchanged for technocracy. Here, the reduction of autonomy is perceived as a threat to dignity because not humans but technologies are in control. Second, there is the risk of immorality or amorality. If we delegate our moral decisions to technologies, we risk becoming unable to exercise moral decision-making. Finally, there is the problem related to the fact that technologies differ from laws in limiting human freedom. Moreover, the values and the choices implemented in them are not the result of a democratic process. A key problem is to find a democratic way to design moralizing technologies. This means, for example, that the processes used to insert these values must be transparent and publicly discussed. Designers of technologies cannot simply inscribe a desired form of morality into an artifact. This is very important in order to avoid unintentional and unexpected forms of mediation. A famous example is the invention of energy-saving light bulbs created to reduce energy consumption that instead increased it, because bulbs were added to places previously left unlit. So, technology design appears to entail more than inventing functional products. The perspective of technological mediation reveals that designing should be regarded as a form of materializing morality. The ethics of engineering design should take more seriously the moral charge of technological products and rethink the moral responsibilities of designers accordingly. In conclusion, designers cannot simply inscribe a desired form of morality into an artifact, but need to anticipate the future mediating role of technologies. At the same time, users and citizens should be aware of who decides the values to be embedded in a technology. But also policymakers should be able to intervene not only a posteriori to regulate already existing technologies, but to co-shape them from the beginning 